Hey, what is going on, guys? Boyd from his back in video. And today we do have on former Ole Miss running back, Akeem Judd. So, Akeem, yeah. hey, welcome to the show and I appreciate you doing this, my man. Yeah, for sure, man. Appreciate you for having me. Okay, so first of all, uh, just tell where you're from. Uh, you can tell what years you played at Ole Miss. Uh, mm -hmm. You can talk about teams you play for the NFL. Just kind of mm -hmm. give a little short description, uh, right quick, of yourself. Uh, yeah, so I'm from born and raised in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, uh, high school wise, I played high school football at uh, Southern Durham High School. Um, played junior college football at Georgia Military College, and then uh, from there transferred to Ole Miss. Played uh, from 2014 to 2016, and then uh, 2017 um, signed undrafted to the. New, no, the Tennessee Titans um, was waived IR, got hurt during uh, camp. Well, during the, uh, like the third game of preseason. And then um, was picked up by the Jets for the rest of the 2017 season. 27, no, 2018 season, I was with the Jets a little bit, got released, and then got picked up by the Packers, which is where I uh, basically resigned from the NFL. So that's pretty much my playing career. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you mentioned you're from uh, Dorm, North Carolina. Um, mm -hmm. How just how would you describe Dorm? Is it kind of like a like a big town, kind of decent sized town? Um, how, how would you describe? I want to it? say that's like another question. Do you like Durham? Oh yeah, yeah. I like Durham. Uh, I would say comparison wise, um, it's a little bit. It's a little bit bigger than Jackson, I would say, but uh, it's 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 a good town, you know, good city or whatever. Uh, I think that uh, the biggest thing we got as far as sports is Duke basketball, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but as far as uh, growing up wise, for me, you know, I grew up in a um, I grew up in a project, so like my experience of Durham. I grew up all over Durham. Like I, I've been all around Durham. So I, uh, it was kind of fun for me though. I can't say I had like it hard or anything like that growing up. It was always fun. I didn't realize, uh, like I was actually being brought up in the projects until I went outside of the projects to really know what was out there to offer. But, uh, it was pretty cool, man. I say Durham, uh, it's more of a, uh, basketball, basketball city than football. Yeah. Yeah, especially with Duke. Yeah. Mm hmm. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I got you. Okay, so you mentioned yeah, he's kind of on the bad part of the town, and I was doing some research uh, before this before this show, and I found some pretty interesting stuff, man. I found some information that said he's actually shot once. Uh, I saw some articles saying there was at times. I mean, you had no food, uh, nothing to eat, no lights mm -hmm. inside the house. Uh, I actually saw there was one article that was saying. Um, you actually moved in with the assistant principal of the school. So could you kind of talk more about just kind of growing up in just rough times and how did you move in with the assistant principal? I kind of found some of this stuff pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of that is kind of like uh, spaced out. So, uh, I mean, for the part getting shot at, that happened. Uh, that was just that one occasion. I've been shot at a couple of times just being in an environment, not necessarily saying that they was – aiming for me, you know what I mean? But, you know, just, you know, being in an environment where it's, where it's going down like that and uh, you might be a family member or a relative or friends with the people that they're against. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that happened. Man. The particular time, the particular time that you're talking about was, uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's from the documentary uh, with the, uh, the season at Ole Miss. Um, okay. Yeah, I did. I did watch part of that too. To be honest with you, so that that was pretty much uh, my ex girlfriend' um, house. She stayed across the street. Uh, well, she stayed in the neighborhood, basically called the South Side. And uh, okay, um, I'm not sure if that 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 particular day they was. I'm, I'm pretty sure they wasn't looking for me because I wasn't into nothing like that. I played sports, so but uh, you know I had on. Uh, all black and stuff like that, walking around at night. And I see, I was going to the store. I seen this van kept going back and forth. And, uh, you know, I'm paying attention as I'm going into the store, but I'm like, you know, like I said, I don't have really nothing to worry about because I'm not into nothing. So 
as I come out the store, that same van was driving back and forth. And uh, I go across the street from uh, where the store was to get to get, get back to my ex-girlfriend's house. And as I crossed the street, that van was coming back down the street and I turned the corner where it was like really no street lights like that. Like you really couldn't see me because again, I had an all black. And then I crossed the street from, I was walking on the side where my ex-girlfriend house was at. Then I crossed the street just because I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say God, but my insides was telling me to like, you know, something about to happen or something. And then as I crossed the street, the van comes down the street that I'm walking on, they go past me and then they go to the like the end of the street and turn the corner and like they yeah. hop out and they start shooting. And then I ran behind the building where it, it was the building is still there. So I ran behind the building and just waited until I heard the gunshot stop. And then I didn't immediately go right back out just in case they were circling around. So I kind of waited a little bit and then sprinting in the house. And yeah, I was like in the 10th grade when that happened. But yeah, um, I couldn't even yeah, imagine. Like yeah, them situations used to happen often, especially in the projects. Like I said, you know, going through um, being in that environment with uh, a lot of people angry and a lot of people, you know, doing stuff that they probably shouldn't, you know, it causes that type yeah. of stuff to happen. But uh, fast forward, I guess. Uh, um, so my mom raised me pretty much all my life up until like 16. That's when like my assistant principal and stuff comes into play. Uh, my mom, she was battling uh, drug addiction and stuff. So, okay. uh, you know, 16, I pretty much was on my own, uh, like in you heard with no lights in the house. You know, that's when I really realized what was going on uh, as far as my mom's addiction. And then uh, I dropped, I stopped going to school just because, you know, I was, uh, I was outside, you know, I started football wasn't going the way I wanted it to go as a player and uh or expected it to go both yeah. but uh you know that was pretty much what i had to, um to keep me going through football i mean they want to go to school i didn't like school i wasn't slow or anything i just didn't you know i, I thought about football 24 7 at those times <laughs> and all i wanted to do was play football and that's it I, at one point growing up I, I used to think that i could just play football like in the neighborhood not like in the neighborhood but you know you can go sign up and play football I thought you could do that all the way to the NFL I didn't know that you had to go to college and all of that stuff you know what I'm saying that's how I thought when I was young but my mama she told me you know you got to go to college and yeah so but, uh, I um I dropped out of school started uh you know doing stuff I wasn't supposed to be doing I was going to cars just to do a lot of things to survive. I wasn't necessarily breaking no windows or nothing, but if your door was unlocked, uh, I probably was going to go in there to see what you had. And that was at that time when yeah. I didn't have nothing. And uh, I tried to find, I tried to get jobs and stuff like that, but I didn't have a birth certificate. So I couldn't get in contact with my mom to get my birth certificate. Mm -hmm. so it was a whole lot of stuff with that. And I couldn't wait too much longer to try to figure that out. So I ended up doing that stuff. And then, uh, one random day my brother came home because one of my best friends told him that i wasn't coming to school well my brett my best friend told his uncle that i wasn't coming to school his uncle was good friends with my brother and my brother showed up to the house and kind of like you know got me back into school basically you know punched me up a little bit and uh that's really all i needed to really i just wanted to you know uh have some type of structure i guess with my life because i was bas basically able to do whatever i wanted to do and uh once that um happened i ended up going back to school and that first day i got back to school the first person i seen was my high school coach coach jones i came in the side door i didn't walk in the front office area i, I walked in the side door he was going towards his office which was by the side door and he was like man where you been at man you know uh, i ain't seen you in school in in, the, in, a, in a long time you know so i'm glad to see you back but what you've been doing and stuff like that and uh let him know what was going on and then he took me immediately to the principal's office which is mr barnes um mr barnes mr barnes actually uh found found i ain't gonna say found me but uh found out about me uh during a jv game during the season he called me to the office one day and told me that i had a talent he didn't know who i was i i knew who he was of course because he was the principal but i stayed out of his way i never was in the office or nothing like that so he never really had any reason to know me personally and um 
he uh basically that was the first encounter i had with him and the second one is now when i'm actually you know going to see him to get back in school so then he you know he was basically saying like man uh i've been wondering what's been happening with you like as far as where you've been because he kept his eye on me i guess since that game and um i told him my situation and uh that's when you know he basically told me that he was gonna make sure i got back in school right because he knew i had a talent he knew i wanted to you know uh do right in school and stuff like that which is my circumstances and um ended up uh taking me to my godmom, which is the assistant principal's office. And this was my first time meeting her. And so she uh, basically was the one who scheduled my classes to get me back eligible to play next year. Um, and uh, I had to take a lot of uh, classes outside of school. So basically online classes um, just so I could graduate or well, be caught up with my actual class. And uh I did a lot of work and you know, stayed in her office a lot. We she gravitated towards me. I gravitated towards her. Uh just as far as someone to like, you know, tell what was going on in my life if, with, with, you know, with with some comfort. And uh and I used to just tell her what I was going through. And I guess she would go home and tell her husband about me and like how she really liked me as a student that that that, that really wanted something out of life. And uh just was, you know, had the circumstances, you know, that I was dealing with. But um she uh came came to school one random day and was like you know my, uh, i told my husband about you and uh he wanted me to ask you did you want to come stay with us and i was like you know i'll throw it off you know <laughs> and, uh, it was like you know i felt I, like i said i felt comfortable because i you know she felt like a mom already you know just from like a school mm -hmm. mom so it really wasn't too far-fetched and nothing like that but uh yeah i was like yeah sure because i was I, at the time i was staying at uh my brother's girl, my brother's grandma on his dad's side house, which is like my grandma too, grandma constant. So it wasn't weird to stay there either, but um, it was just a lot of rules that I won't used to. And uh, mm -hmm. I was basically in this room where it was like, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was a good room, I guess, but I was sleeping on the air matches and I was every morning I wake up on the little wooden part. So I was like, nah, I gotta do something different, but you know, yeah, that's when she, I basically was going to her, vitting to her about those type of things. And she basically, they had a room that was, they, they don't have any children uh, uh, biologically. So, you know, um, they all, they had a, they had a couple extra rooms in the house. Um, and basically like, yeah, I, I basically became uh, their son after that. So yeah, it was cool. Wow. It was a good experience. Um, as far as, you know, that, that happened like, uh that was at the middle of my well that was probably the end of my senior year like probably like i say about five more months into my five more months left in senior year going into junior college at that time was when that happened so yeah a lot of that stuff was kind of like spaced out but yeah that's how it went wow man that's, that's crazy man it's yeah. you, you've been through a lot for sure man yeah um, but yeah, the next part I do you want to talk about is uh, you, you actually just kind of mentioned it. Yeah, your uh, junior college days. So uh, mm -hmm. this kind of kind of the question is, um, I mean, was there like no D one schools interested in you out of high school? Why why the JUCO route and why the uh, Georgia Military College? That's a good question. So based off of what I just told you, as far as when I dropped out of school, that was the main reason. That was the actual only reason that I had to do that because uh, when I dropped out. You know your ninth and tenth well your ninth grade year is your most important year of high school so ninth grade year i did decent grade wise i still wasn't focused because football wasn't going the way that i expected it i was getting high schools coming to the school pulling me out of class telling me that they want me to go to their high school when i was in middle school and uh you know so i ended up choosing to go to hillside um which was not in my actual living district at the time but my grandma stayed in hillside's district so i moved to hillside i moved to stay with my grandma which was right around the corner from my ex-girlfriend's house and so uh i feel like honestly just being in that area um it was it was it was it was a distracting thing because i was i didn't have any rules i was i, I skipped a big part i used to live with my ex-girlfriend at one point especially during the time where 
uh, all of that was going on, I was living with her. I wasn't really just at her house. I was staying there. So the actual time that I got shot at, I was living with her at the time. So, uh, you know, just I think that right there played a big role in me not being focused on my grades. Not saying that she had anything to do with it, but, you know, I'm basically living as an adult, as a teenager. You know what I mean? And You know what I'm saying? You you're not really going to be focused too much on that stuff. So like I was before when my mom was doing straight. So I would say um, 10th grade year, of course, you know, I dropped out and then going, I caught by, I got my grades caught back up to graduate, but I didn't have the certain GPA that I needed. So my junior year, uh, I had a good year football wise, the university of North Carolina, I was getting a lot of uh, letters and stuff like that from Auburn, Tennessee, Missouri. You know, letters really don't mean nothing, though. So yeah, but that was the that was the first start of like I'm like I didn't go to any camps or anything, and they they noticed me somehow, you know. But uh, that was something that really you know made me motivated to uh, uh, and gave me a spark to say that I could get an offer even with my GPA being like that. I've seen it happen before, but you know it was always a lot of loopholes and stuff. So. Fast forward, uh, the University of North Carolina, Coach Brownie. They, um, well, yeah. you know, Coach Brownie. You talking about well, Coach Matt Brown? Is that what you're talking? Oh about? no, 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 no. Oh no, no Coach. No, I, don't I thought know. you were saying you knew Coach Brownie, but he's a North Carolina. He's a big recruiter. Yeah. In North Carolina. He coached at uh, I, Northern Hills. Yeah. yeah, I thought he was talking about Coach Matt Brown there for a minute. Oh no, I met Coach Mac though. He's he's a good coach. He's out there now, so yeah, he's a good guy. But uh, yeah. I was saying so. Um, the unit, they, they basically, my coach called me into his office and told me that this was a random day too. He was like, uh, North Carolina, they, they like you, they want to offer you, you know what I'm saying? But at the time, what they did was they sent their kids that didn't qualify, uh, to, uh, Hargraves military Academy. Okay. And so with that being said, uh, they wanted me to go to Hall Hargraves military Academy for six months. And then I would be able to, you know, uh, going to Carolina with four years and uh that was on the table so they I, I'm thinking like man that sounds good you know but then yeah, I get home not at all. yeah I get to the house they actually sent me a handwritten letter inviting me to the Georgia Tech game that Saturday so I'm like man it's real like they really they really for real like wow so yeah. me and my brother and uh, a couple of my teammates we go to the game that Saturday uh watch them against Georgia Tech uh we was about to go to sleep out there. It was so it was so hot, and uh, we we was right there where the sun was at. And uh, I I was ready to go, but I was ready to see what they was talking about after the game. So the game finishes. You know the recruits they go in the locker room afterwards. So we go in the locker room, and then uh, Coach Brownie, I'm looking at the players just like they giving out gloves and stuff like that. You know the high school kids, you want to get the gloves and the ties. Actually, and, stuff. and to be honest with you, man, well, when I was a kid going to oldest yeah. games. Yeah, you know, go right there with the players. Come out yeah. and I was one of the kids right there all the town trying to get gloves, oh, yeah. wristbands, <laughs> towels, you know, whatever I could get. Yeah, and man. To, so, to this day, so got a bunch of gloves and all kind of game you stuff. Oh yeah, I can imagine, man, because I know that's how it goes. As soon as we walk out, they be ready, <laughs> man. Mm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he basically just put his arm around me and, and came up to me out of guys that they had committed on the team and guys that they are actually heavily recruiting. He came up to me and was like, man, we ready to get you here. I'm like, wow, like all of it happened so fast. And, you know, it was real. It won't know. It won't know guessing or nothing. This is the running backs coach. You know, he recruits the area. And so they sent me a hand, handwritten letter and stuff. So I'm like, oh, well, it's official. So then fast forward. This was done to Coach Butch Davis. Um, fast forward about like, I say probably like, well, I skipped the other offers I had too. So that was my junior year. My junior year, I had the university of North Carolina central, which is a HBCU. They're D one, yeah. but they're not like big D one. Then I had North Carolina and T they offered me. And then I had Western Carolina. They offered me. And this was all with me having a 1.7 GPA. Man. So those those are the teams, yeah. That was terrible. Those are the teams <laughs> that was like sticking around, like, yeah, we we gonna get, we gonna have some hope for them. We can probably get a diamond in the rough type of situation. But uh, so I remember after that, uh, I say like a couple months later, North University of North Carolina whole coaching staff get fired. So that deal is off the table now. So now I'm just left with the ones I just named. 
and uh, Western Carolina, they took their offer off the table because it got close to the time when they was like, yeah, we're going to have to need these scholarships to get somebody that, that's going to actually qualify. The University of North Carolina Central did the same thing. And then the only one I had on the table was North Carolina a t which was they wanted me to prop. They wanted, which was basically you go there, you go to their school for one season. You're not really a part of the football team. You just there. You can work out and stuff. But then after that season, you'll still have four years left. So yeah. I was considering that. Then uh, one day, uh, my senior year, going, getting close to not close to signing day, but it was, it was signing day was around the corner, and I had a lot of JUCOs. I had East Mississippi. Yeah. I had uh, I had uh, Independence JUCO. I had Georgia Military, and I think that was it. As far as that I can remember, JUCOs that was on me. I had another like a couple like prep schools and stuff like that. But uh, I remember Georgia Military was like one day I'm walking from school, walking from the buses to go to the front office, and my coach is walking down the hallway with the recruiter, Coach Ramsey from Georgia Military. And I see a bulldog on this on the thing, but I'm like, that's not how the Georgia bull. They had the same colors as Georgia bulldogs, yeah, but I'm like, that, yeah, that's a different bulldog. Yeah. Then I seen the Adidas on the other side. I'm like, nah, that's not that's not Georgia. It's a Georgia <laughs> Nike. So he uh he's like, yeah, this is the coach Coach Ramsey from uh, Georgia Military College and such and such. So he pulls me to the side takes me um by the mail room and just was like look man coach coach Williams sent me down here to make sure that I get you to come to visit us and see what we got to offer and stuff like that and I'm, I'm in my mind I'm like I've never heard of Georgia military college so I'm like I hear the military part that's one thing that's throwing me off right there because I ain't really want to do that well that was, then, I was, I mean, another question I was going to ask you as well too was mm-hmm. I was just kind of curious if you was interested in jo- joining the military or not but well, nah, yeah, nah. you kind you kind of answered it now. Yeah, no, yeah, nah, no way. Oh. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but it just it's not it's not for me. Um, yeah, I know what you but, mean. But uh, they uh, I remember they 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 basically sent Coach Ramsey down. Then he went back to Georgia. They came. He came back again and and uh, met with me and one of my teammates, uh, Legrand Harley who I actually went down to Georgia military with me as well. And uh, I showed him all my friends highlights that I wanted to go with me because I didn't want to go through that alone. And yeah. I still wanted to continue to play with uh, my best friends. So I put all of them on and only my friend Legrand was the only one that wanted to, to go down there with me. Uh, my other friend, he committed to North Carolina central and the other one committed to North Carolina NT. And, uh, so, you know, they came back to Ruba Tuesdays and ate with us. Then they wanted us to come down there for a fisher visit. We go down there and uh, we basically commit on the spot because uh, they showed us. It's so crazy how I, I got to go deep into this because it's way bigger than how I'm explaining it. So yeah, go, as far as, as, as far as it's big as far as going to Ole Miss and uh, it's, it's real crazy. So um, we go down there. They show us a book that was like probably like. I don't know, you can't even see my hand number. Hold on. It was probably yeah, like this it, it. And it was filled up with guys that they have sent to division one colleges, like not no D twos or D threes. It was straight D ones. And it was all the way from 1992. And I kept seeing guys in there. It was filled up with Georgia and South Carolina. Like they sent a lot of players to Georgia and South Carolina now, mainly defensive guys. But still, that's all I needed to see, you know what I mean? Because I haven't heard anything about it. And that was that was all I wanted to play Division One football. So after I only had the North Carolina AT on the team, I was pretty much like, I'm going to just go to school for business and just play football for four years and whatever happens, happens. But once, you know, I went down there. So for, before going to GMC, I used to always try to find stuff online that would show me what it was like to play division one football like like a day mm-hmm. in the life you know back then uh, yeah i watched watch a bunch of these videos too yeah it's some so, pretty stuff exactly so back then it was only really like it's not it wasn't as much that's available now back then it was only alabama had something called training days where they showed their training camp then you had uh i want to say virginia tech had like an all access episode ohio state um, Tennessee, they had like like one little episodes, but the school that had the most was Ole Miss. They had the season, yeah. so 
I was always like, I remember watching the season and just like, man, they look like they're having fun. Like they look like that. They look cool. Like, you know, they, they show, I seen the one when they went to the bowl game against Georgia tech and yeah. uh, just the camaraderie they had in the, in, in the hotel room and stuff like that. It reminded me of Georgia military college, but on a division one level. And so uh, I kept watching that stuff. So then when I go on my visit, Mind you, The Blind Side is one of my favorite movies, too. So I always yeah. watched The Blind Side and seen Ole Miss and stuff like that, too, like in high school, before I even knew what or nothing, anything about Ole Miss. And so I go to the visit. We're sitting in this meeting room. He's basically asking all the players, like, what school you want to go to? What school? Like, all on the spot. And I really didn't know. Like, I don't have no favorite football team. I like Florida State and stuff when I was growing up. But I never was, like, no diehard fan of no team. So. I just like to see good football, and I, I like I, I always had favorite players rather than favorite teams. So he yeah. get to me, and he caught me off guard. I didn't know what to say. I it, I didn't even think to say nothing. It just I was like Ole Miss, and it just came out. He was like, "They recruit here too. Where you want to go?" He was just going on the line. He basically said all the schools that recruit there, and so you know that was like I was like, "Man, that's crazy." So, and I'm only thinking about all of this as I look back on it. So then fast forward. Uh, I'm skipping a lot as far as all the other stuff as far as JUCO, but fast forward, Ole Miss was my first SEC offer. So it was kind of like a tenfold moment, like from watching the videos to going to the to to the to the visit and then just, you know, I don't know what made me say Ole Miss. I thought I would have probably said NC State or something before that, you know what I mean? But it just came out Ole Miss and then they were the first school that offered me, and then that's why I ended up going. I mean, first school to offer me as far as in the SEC and then yeah, with the old miss. So yeah, that was pretty wow, much. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, had, I had no idea. Yeah, for those who have never heard of the season, it's kind of like mm-hmm. a. How would you describe it? more like a kind of like behind the scenes of like yeah. story players and just kind of throughout the week, and then I would like, yeah I would say during, yeah during the season they'll show like highlights of the games and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I think it's like a recap of the week. I look at it like a recap yeah, of the week as far as with football practices and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, we've been we almost have been doing the season now for quite a while, and they mm-hmm. uh, they come out. It's every uh, every Wednesday night during the football season. So I think it comes out mm-hmm. six o'clock Central. I think uh, they even do some baseball and do some other sports as well too. But yeah, I haven't seen it in a while. I got to check up on it. Yeah, I, I still watch them all the time, man. They're still oh, yeah. they're pretty good stuff, man. I, I enjoy it. So yeah. okay, so yeah, you mentioned um, yeah, you mentioned coming to Old Mess. Now, this is kind of another. Uh, just kind of interesting question I want to ask you. Now, mm-hmm. at this time when you came to Ole Miss, and of course, you know, like everybody's like every player's kind of different, and every player has like a different opinion. But mm-hmm. I mean, when you came to Ole Miss, you know, you, you got to be honest. I mean, Ole Miss already had some pretty good running backs at the time, and we had you know Jalen Walton, you had uh, Jordan Wilkins, uh, Mark mm-hmm. Dotson, uh, you know, Matters as well too. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know I know some guys would have been kind of like scared or kind of say, like, okay, you know, Ole Miss has too many running backs. You know, I ain't going here. I ain't gonna get no playing time. But mm-hmm. anyone, anyway, you know, one story short, I mean, you came to Ole Miss with a bunch of you know other pretty good, talented running backs. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, that first season you came to Ole Miss, you didn't play at all. Mm-hmm. So was that? I guess kind of the question is, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just kind of assuming it had to be pretty hard for you to sit on the bench and not get any mm-hmm. playing time the first year and. Uh, mm. Kind of another kind of another question as well too is, I, mean, I know like some of the coaches are kind of like honest up front, like okay, if you come to Ole Miss, you know you may be a red shirt, and mm. they may play for us like a year or two down mm-hmm. the road. But I know nah, so a bunch of questions, but yeah, nah, I got you. Um, so that makes sense. I was yeah, it's all good. I was the number one running back in the country coming out of JUCO, so yeah. Had my top three offers. I mean, the top three that I was choosing from was Tennessee, Auburn, and Ole Miss. And so uh, the deal with that was, you know, they telling me, you know, to be honest, I didn't even know Jordan Wilkins. I didn't know about Jordan Wilkins until I got to Ole Miss. I, mean, I ain't going to say until I got there, until I signed with Ole Miss. So uh, they telling me, you know, they want a 225-pound running back like me and, you know, and my question was, you know, my concern was that they didn't run the ball. 
So, you know, I'm telling them, like, you know. We run the, we run the ball a lot for sure back then. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, still good to this day. So. so, I'm like, you know, I don't think that you guys, you know, uh, they ran they ran a lot with Jeff Scott, you know, but uh yeah. Jeff they ran when I when, when I was getting recruited from what I was seeing out of all those three schools, the team that ran the ball the most was Arbor. And then it was Tennessee, then it was Ole Miss. And so um I got a lot of love from Tennessee. Like I was probably like a second away from going to Tennessee. And uh I remember, you know, uh telling coach Nix, you know, like, you know, I I'm, I'm I'm concerned about the, you know, the running and stuff like that and told that the coach Werner when they came to my in-house visit and their, their response was that, you know, we don't got you on the team and stuff like that. So as far as the red shirt in part, Oh, as far as uh, all the running backs on the depth chart, like I never really cared about that because everywhere uh, that I had offers to that I wanted to go to, I was going to have to compete regardless. And I mean, yeah. as, you, as a running back, you going to compete. I don't, I don't know no running back. That's just like, Oh, I'm finna, go here because there's no running backs over there. Uh, nah, but uh, I I really wasn't concerned about competition or nothing like that. And I felt like, you know, they was after me pretty hard for a reason. But uh, I had offers from Wisconsin, Florida State, Louisville, teams that, that – that Wisconsin was a team that ran the ball the most out of the, all the yeah. offers I had. So I actually was like, man, you know, I want to go somewhere that's going to run the ball. There in Minnesota as well, they wanted me pretty bad. But – uh. I ended up, you know, believing in what they was telling me at Ole Miss, and you know, it was it was it, recruiting is a business. That's what I want people to understand. <laughs> recruiting is a business, so oh, yeah. it you is know, sure. they're gonna tell you certain things to get you until you sign that dotted line, which is you gotta know what what it is. And I mean, I respect it, but uh, I didn't know that I was going. They had a plan to red shirt me, so they already pretty much had it planned. I guess what they wanted to do. Um, they wanted to seek me out that year knowing – I don't know if they knew, but I guess they felt like people were going to transfer, which happened. You know, I trained, which is my guy. He transferred. Mark Dotson, which is my guy. They transferred. Yeah. Um, but uh, the – the the I don't know. I say, you know, it was, it was, it was cool as far as the whole experience, but um, things wasn't – what they said, you know, which is understandable. Like I said, you got a whole bunch of guys that they promise and stuff to. And, uh, you know, you just got to, hey, you got to set what it is. I did what I had to do the best I could. So, you know, uh, yeah, that's that's how that situation went with uh, as far as going to Ole Miss and then having a the red shirt my freshman year. They didn't tell me that I was going to – I mean, my freshman year, my uh, red shirt junior year. Yeah. He didn't tell me that until the week of Boise State. So up until then, they had it like I was going to be playing. And then once we, that week until we played Boise State in the Chick Fil A Bowl, Chick Fil A uh, kickoff, um, they was like, "Yeah, we're going to red shirt you." Well, Coach John, Coach Nix was like, "Look, I know you're not going to like it, but we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going to need you for the future. So we're just going, you know, just get get right or whatever." And I, I was coming off of an injury as well. I was coming off of a toe injury in junior college. So I don't know if that in their mind had something to do with it, but it played out how it played out. I actually I'm thankful for that year because it gave me three years instead of two. And uh yeah. that, that, year, that year right there, I pretty much was just like a, a red shirt freshman. I was uh I went out a little bit. I'm not really a party person, but I went out more than I did my playing years and then you know just had time to just do whatever and be a college student. So it was cool. Okay, I gotcha. Um, okay, so yeah, you mentioned, yeah, didn't play in the 14 season, the 15 season, uh, did play some. Um, mm-hmm. and then this is what I really want to talk about yeah, the 2016 season. Um, and you know, at, at that time in 2016, we had well, you know, kind of like the top three running backs. I mean, it was mm-hmm. supposed to be, uh, it was going to be you, uh, Wilkins, and I think it was going to be uh, Eric Swinney, I think it was the other one as well, too, supposed to be in the rotation, mm-hmm. and just kind of give Ole Miss fans just kind of a a little flashback in history that mm-hmm. 2016 season uh, I think it was right before the season started that you know the news came out about Wilkins uh, some kind of like academic issue or something mm-hmm. came out I forgot the full story on that mm-hmm. uh, I know I know Swinney he got hurt I think it was the first game of the year Florida State yeah you know, the first games, and 
So then, yeah, pretty much. I mean, he was the man there in 2016. Uh, the 100. I mean, he had a bunch of carries. Looking back at it, I saw it was 164 carries, mm -hmm. uh, 826 yards, six mm -hmm. touchdowns. So, um, and then just kind of skipping a while now. Uh, of course, uh, in a NFL draft now. I just this mm -hmm. is where we kind of skip to now. But um, I do want to ask you kind of a question now. Uh, of course, you went undrafted, you know, to the Titans. Mm -hmm. um, what was kind of like, I guess the question is, like, the interview process? I mean, were coaches and scouts telling you, like, hey, you may go sixth or seventh round or undrafted? Or who were some of the teams you kind of, like, met with, uh, teams interested in you? If you could talk about that for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one running back you missed was Eugene Brasley, though. Uh, yeah, he actually, he, it was it was me. It was me and him my senior year once. Uh, uh, Sweeney and uh, Wilkins went down, but um, going into the draft, uh, like right after the football season, uh, you know, we didn't go to a bowl game that year. So yeah, um, you yeah, finished. Uh, I think it was five and seven that year. Yeah, yeah, got, no, got yeah, it might, yeah, five and seven, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, we beat Texas and them that like, that one game, and then lost to Vanderbilt and uh, State. So yeah, but I say um, we uh, right after that season, um, Coach Barney. I don't know if you know Barney. Barney's a legend. Uh, Barney, he hit me up and was like, uh, I, "I never, I never have met him, but yeah." Oh, you probably know. seen him on the season that during that season. Yeah. Everybody loved Barney, but uh, he um, he called and told me he was pretty much the guy that handled the 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 situations with the seniors and the scouts so he basically called and told me that uh the seahawks the chiefs and it was i, I want to say the dolphins they wanted to meet with me at uh one of those hotels um it was a fairly it was the newest one that was that was at about 2016 so it was one of them new hotels that's close by campus i okay. can't remember but we, we, we met over there and uh, they pretty much was just telling me that they got their eyes on me. Oh, the Seahawks! It was the Seahawks too. They oh, wanted to, uh, they wanted to uh, see more of me at pro day and stuff like that. And so I came out in the draft and the running back heavy draft. So you know, I came out with Dalvin Cook, uh, Leonard, uh, all those guys. Who are all the other running backs? I can't remember all of them, but it was a lot of them. And uh, the main thing that they said with me is that I didn't have a, uh, the amount of carries that they had or yards that they had. So they, and that was my only year actually like starting. So, you know, that, yeah, that was the main yeah. thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, but then I went to You had most of the carries, most of the yards. And I think you, I think you finished first in touchdowns too, rushing. Yeah. I'm not sure. I, I can't even, that, that season was uh, back, to be honest with you. But, yeah. But, yeah. He, uh, he, once we're short, yeah, 2016 season was the season that yeah, yeah, you got to play the mm -hmm. most. Mm -hmm. But uh, I say, you know, they uh, I had a I went to a bowl game, the College Gridiron Showcase, and they had every team out. They had all 32 teams out there. I met with like 17 of them, and they all pretty much was just telling me like, you know, uh, you definitely are going to be a steal whoever gets you, and so. Um, I did pretty good at the the bowl game. I scored like four touchdowns, and uh, after that, I was training in Boca Raton, Florida, at uh, XPE, and um, went and did my pro day. Ran a four five, bench press twenty uh, two twenty five twenty one times. Um, my short shuttle was pretty decent, but I didn't do a good L cone drill. But I caught every pass, didn't drop a pass. And so uh, after that, the Patriots, um, no, the Chargers wanted to work me out, and uh, I can't forget, I can't remember. Uh, there was two teams wanted to work me out, and then I met with the Raiders, and then I met with the Patriots. So me, Quincy, me, Quincy, and uh, somebody else, we met with the right Ra We met with the Patriots, and then I met with the Raiders by myself, and I met with those other teams by myself. So going into the draft. I'm getting calls the day before from teams asking me, of course, you know, where you're going to be at and stuff like that. And then uh, the day of the draft, the day of the last day of the draft, uh, the, the Chargers called me during the draft telling me that they was going to take me in the sixth round. 
They, no, it was the seventh round. They didn't do it. Then the, uh, I want to say it was a, it was a couple of teams called me during the draft, like basically saying like how I'm doing and what I'm gonna be doing. And uh, as far as some of them, they was calling, I guess, for free agency. But yeah. um, the only team that really called that said that they was gonna draft me was the Chargers. They was they were supposed to draft me in the seventh round, but they didn't. And then. Uh, the draft ended and then my phone was blowing up. I had pretty much like 12 teams wanting me to come and sign with them for undrafted free agent. I was about to go to the Ravens and uh, ended up signing. My agent was telling me to go with the Titans. So I ended up went with going with the Titans. When I look back, I should have went with the Ravens because they didn't have a start running back and the Titans had Derrick Henry and DeMarco Murray. And the, the deal with that actually was similar to the deal with Ole Miss where my agent telling me, that they don't have a third down back or third string back. They looking to add somebody to their third string back, third string, yeah, third string spot. And they actually drafted a running back that was a, a speed guy, Califani Muhammad. So they said that when I asked my agent, I'm like, they said that they wanted a third string back, but they just drafted a running back. Why they didn't draft me if they really wanted me? And he's like, yeah, he's more of a kick returner type of guy, like a – like they 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 was they was hoping for him to be like a Chris Johnson 2.0, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh it made sense, I guess, but it made more sense for me to go to the Ravens. But I was trusting my agent. It's a new process. You don't really know what to do, what to look for. You don't know how to go about this business. So uh yeah, I ended up going with the Titans and yeah, that's pretty much how that went as far as going undrafted. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you uh, this is kind of another question too, just talking in a fail. I mean, yeah, you got I mean, you got to play in the NFL for a couple of years. You know, you got cut mm-hmm. a couple of times. I mean, yeah, you played mm-hmm. with the Titans at first, uh, played for the Jets, played for the Packers. Just kind of the mm-hmm. question is, like, what was the hardest part about the NFL? Um, the hardest part, I would sure, say. Like, the, I mean, I'm sure you could tell, like, the competition was, you know, a lot better in college. and. Uh, it really, to be honest with you, I mean, don't get me wrong now. It's not too much advanced I, mean, I don't know if it's because i played i played juco ball we went i mean in juco i played on the best juco one of the best juco teams in juco and we was independent so we always played against the top jucos just to get ranked um going then from there going to the sec um i really didn't see no big difference as far as play uh the main difference was the defense alignment are a lot faster Okay. They're, they're more like linebackers. And then that's basically the same thing as far as the NFL. The defensive line are more like linebackers. The linebackers, they can more than likely run with running backs. That's pretty much the hardest that I could say as far as playing-wise. The hardest part as being an NFL player was just sitting in in, in, that, in that building all day. Like, you know, college, you get to go from class to class and then – you know, you got meetings in the building or whatever, but you're not going to really be in the building for too long. In the NFL, you're going to be in that same building from 8 o'clock in the morning all the way until, you know, probably sometimes 10 o'clock at night, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it can get dark depending on what organization you're with, you know what I mean? If you're not on those no, – no winning – if you're not uh, at a winning organization, then, you know, it could be tough, you know, uh, losing every week. You know, coaches is on edge because they their jobs in jeopardy. You know how that go when you college and mm-hmm. yeah. NFL coaches can get fired during the week. So, you know, um, that would probably be the hardest part for me as far as just you know just um, I I was on practice squad a lot too, so I wasn't really involved in the game plans and stuff. So just watching the game plan, knowing that you're not included, and then just having to sit in the uh, office all day like that. That would be probably the hardest, but other than that, it was pretty cool. I I could see that, yeah. Um, okay, so this is kind of like the last part I want to talk about. So we started talking about this before we started the show, but yeah. uh, you're actually doing some coaching now. And of course, mm-hmm. for those who haven't realized by now, uh, there in the background, you do have the yeah. uh, dorm hurricanes. Yeah. So if you want to talk about that for a minute? So I just want to kind of let you um, talk about how you got into coaching and. Yeah, I think you mentioned this like a travel football team. Mm-hmm. Uh, just kind of talk about that for a minute. Yeah, so you know, um, I got into coaching in 2021. Um, not too long after playing. Uh, once once I was done playing, 
my junior college coach, rest in peace his soul, Coach Williams, he called me and wanted me to go to Georgia Military, become the running backs coach. Uh, at the time, I wasn't really wanting to get into coaching. I kind of was just, you know, getting done with the game. I wanted to just take some time off and, you know, be free from everything at, at one point. Then I, uh, uh, he asked me again, and I uh, wasn't ready at that time either. Either Then my high school coach asked me again. I still wasn't ready. And then I finally came back home, and then he asked me – he actually – my high school coach actually asked me to help out at another high school. It wasn't a college. It was at a high school. And uh, I was like, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind because I started training. I started training kids. Okay. So uh, that's what I do pretty much on the regular is, like, training kids in the area. But um, so I uh, I ended up, you know, saying, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind getting back towards the game now since, you know, I'm back. And Shaw University is in Raleigh, so it wasn't too far from where I live. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, that wouldn't be bad. So I signed on as the running backs coach. Uh, coach there the 2021 season we ended up led the conference in Russian yards I had the leading conference I had the lead in Russia in the conference uh we averaged the offensive coordinator wanted us to average as a goal 4.5 we averaged 4.8 yards a carry which is a Shaw record uh I had my second string running back he led the team in touchdowns and was top five in rushing and uh touchdowns in the conference so we had an excellent year in the running back room but we didn't pull through as a unit as far as uh, the team and uh, things just wasn't really what it was, you know, what I thought it was going to be as, at all, you know, based off of what I was told. Now it ain't nothing like I'm just going to leave the situation, but I stayed yeah. the whole season. I was told something at the beginning of the season and then it didn't play out like that during the season. So I waited till after the season to see if it was going to change. It didn't. And then I basically, you know, had to separate myself from that situation. So then I took 2022 off uh, from coaching, just training and just watching football in the area, seeing what's going on, seeing what type of um, football is being played in the area. And, you know, I've been in, I've lived in Nashville, lived in Mississippi, lived in Georgia, lived in uh, Colorado. So I've seen different football. I've watched football everywhere I've been. So I've seen how football is in different states and uh, I don't see nothing that's being done in in those those real football states being done here. So I wanted to kind of try to like uh, be a part of something special <clears throat> as far as you know bringing a, a big football scene to the to the uh, to the states of North Carolina, to the state of North Carolina. But uh, you know, I I said I'm gonna try to go back to high school ball um, 2023, which was this year. So in the beginning of this year. I had the opportunity to coach at uh, East Chapel Hill as a defensive coordinator. Um, that program is not really like a, a winning program. They haven't been winning. They haven't they haven't won any big games since they've been uh, uh, established since in, in 1995, I think. So you know, I, I look for challenges. So I was like, you know, they looking for a defensive coordinator. I applied for the job, got it. And then when I got there, it was just what they did. It wasn't trying to change the culture. They was just comfortable with, you know, how they've been doing things, which is in a losing way. And I like to feel like I know what it takes to win just by being in the programs that I play with. And, you know, throughout my whole playing career, I never really lost no football games. You know what I mean? My eighth grade year, uh, we went undefeated in football, basketball, and track, you know, with no losses and no sport that That's I played in. Yeah, so – uh, and even before then, like all my teams I played on, I always was like MVP. We always finished like at least nine and some. We never was like no lose. I never really had no losing season. So I, I think I know what it takes to win. And um, and like I said, every program that I've been to, we end up winning. You know, like I look at this. How I look at the situation with me going to Ole Miss. So before I went to Ole Miss, uh, they had Laquan. They had. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Rob, Rob Kandichi, um, Laramie, uh, Tony, Tony Connor. So that was the they they all signed before I got there. They signed the year prior. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I yeah. seen what they had going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I was in junior college, I actually was watching the old Alabama and Ole Miss game on TV at, at GMC, and it was a blowout like 42 to 3 or something like that. Something crazy. So I'm like, man. <laughs> and then, uh, Fast forward to when I got the Ole Miss, we ended up having the number one defense in the country. And mind you, I'm who they're going against on defense every day. I'm on the, I'm going with the scout team. Not saying 
just me, but I'm the only I was the only player of my caliber on scout team at that time. Everybody else that was on my caliber was on the starting offense or whatever, or playing on the offense. So I'm on this, I'm on the scout team with a bunch of freshmen and guys that's walk-ons. And by me going hard, I bring the best out of them. From my opinion, this is what I'm looking at from my opinion. I brought the best out of those guys and we brought the best out of our defense. We made the defense start over a whole bunch of times, which is not good. So if the scout team is making the defense have to repeat something over and over. That means that we're getting the best of them. And that happened yeah. a lot. And uh, as you've seen what happened that year, as far as our defense, we ranked number one in the country. That hasn't been done since then. Uh, we beat Bama back to back those years. That hasn't been done since years then. And then last year they went to the Sugar Bowl. They lost, but, you know, uh, when we went, we won. So before that, GM, GMC, same deal. They wasn't, they wasn't, they was a good program, but they didn't go to the national championship. They didn't go to no bowl games. And we did that both years. So that's kind of how it's been throughout my experience of seeing the teams that I joined uh, as far as just like, you know, be, being, being a positive change to the organization. So I wanted to do that with the uh, coaching and uh, join a, a program and breathe that positive change and, you know, add my sauce to it. But like I said, they wasn't wanting change at that time. So I stepped away from that situation. Then my other high school coach wanted me to come back and help out at my high school. And that kind of was the same situation too. So uh, throughout all of that and training and seeing what's going on, I was already having the thoughts of starting my own uh, youth flat football league as a whole league, uh, ball out youth flat football league. But that's still going to come in the future. So then I kept getting, you know, the, the 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 guy to start my own football team and i'm like tackle football team i'm like man i would but it's like you know i don't really know the logistics and then i finally did it and then we ended up getting started so now we're here 2024 durham hurricanes wow that's pretty cool so uh yeah do you want to talk about um now and we you know we've kind of talked about this some last week uh as far as like i know you're trying to like raise money for some uh donations Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about that? Just like, what's the best way to, like, for donations or how can people just help you out? Yeah, so you can follow us on all social media platforms. Uh, we on Instagram as Durham Hurricanes Football. We're on Facebook as Durham Hurricanes Football. Uh, TikTok, Durham Hurricanes Football. YouTube, we don't have any content on TikTok and YouTube yet, but once the season starts, there's going to be a lot to see. It's going to be a lot to check in with. Um, and as far as donations, uh, you can check us out on our uh, on our Facebook page. There's going to be a link to our website, our temporary website, uh -huh. until our official one gets uh, situated with the league. And um, you can click on donations. It's also a sponsorship section where if you want to sponsor uh, our organization, I'll basically uh, see what your business is like and then send you back the sponsorship package. And then we can see how we can work something out. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, we're actually doing, we're finna do some free camps coming January. We're finna do some uh, fundraising situations, going to Walmart, you know, gonna have some cookouts. So it's gonna be a big deal. And yes, we do travel. So we travel, um, we travel from North Carolina to South Carolina, uh, up the East Coast. The national championship is in, in Kissimmee, Florida, um, which is in December. Uh, and we also going to host events, uh, you know, banquets, of course, um, like I said, cookouts and stuff to keep the kids active uh, during the off season and keep them, you know, focused um, on, on football because a lot of people get distracted, especially as a child. And uh, we're going to be taking them college visits. You know, um, I'm definitely going to be taking them to Ole Miss so they can get that experience. Yeah, yeah they, yeah. they got to come to Ole Miss. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, you know, all of that stuff costs. And then, you know, equipment, you know, we're getting uh, new uniforms, new helmets. All of that stuff costs. Just for like 60 helmets, it's almost like $10,000 from Rydell. So, mm. yeah, it's expensive. Yes. But that's not even including shoulder pads. So, yeah. You know, yeah, we're doing a lot of uh, a lot of that going on, and uh, we definitely excited though, man. So, if if you guys want to help out and you want to donate, you can click on the link. I'm gonna uh, actually uh, figure out a way to get the link uh, active on on Facebook on my main page, but it's on it's on the actual Durham Hurricanes uh, Facebook page, Durham Hurricanes Football. So, 
Yeah. And then we got more news and stuff coming as we coming out with a blog uh, that's going to keep it updated uh, January 2024. And then, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the information right now that I could think of. If okay. you're watching in North Carolina and you're in Durham and you want to join, you know, registration is going to start soon. So be on okay. the lookout. Got gotcha. gotcha. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make sure I'll post that link for you in the comments and description. I want to try and help you out, brother. I appreciate that. I appreciate um, that. But yeah, hey, that's, that's pretty much, I think that's going to be it. I can't think I of can't anything think else to talk about. about. So, yeah. You got any final thoughts or questions or anything else before we stop doing this? Or? Nah, I'm, I'm cool, man. I appreciate you for having me, man. And uh, just want to say howdy tight to the Rebel Nation. Yeah, I appreciate you doing this, Akeem. means a lot. So, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Beeps, that is, uh, that's going to be a wrap. That's going to be it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you could, yep. just give a like, uh, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't already, it would be appreciated. And howdy tidy. Howdy tidy.